Okay, so we're going to be looking at the summation of geometric series. Okay, so just like the arithmetic sequences, you can sum them up to get the actual value up to a certain amount of terms. Same with a geometric series as well. Okay, we can do the same. So again, similar notation, we'll let Sn denote the sum of the first n terms. of the general geometric sequence with first term A and common factor oh not common factor sorry that's that common ratio I should say common ratio R okay so IE we've got the sequence A and AR AR squared and so on okay so if I was wanting to sum up the first n terms, okay, then it would be a plus ar plus ar squared plus ar cubed plus all the way to ar n minus 1. Okay. So what I can also do now, If I create a certain equation where I'm multiplying every term by r, okay, so I'm going to multiply the sum by r, that means I multiply everything here by r, I'm going to get ar plus ar squared plus ar cubed plus ar to the power 4 plus all the way. Because I've multiplied that by r, it would then take me to a to the power rn, okay, a to the power, sorry, a times r to the power n. So what that allows me to do, if I subtract, okay, so if I subtract s of n minus r s of n, what that would leave me is the only term that would stay standard and left in the first sequence would be a, and I would be taking off a to the power r n as that's the only term that's left standard once I do the takeaway. Okay. So therefore, if I take a common factor out on both sides, so that's 1 minus r on the left hand side, if I take Sn out, and again if I take the a out, I'm left with 1 minus r to the power n. Okay. And remember, we want to find the summation of this, so I'm just going to find s of n. So it's going to be a multiplied by 1 minus r to the power n divided by 1 minus r. Okay, so that is how we get the formula that is on your formula sheet. Okay, so make a wee note of that. Did we ever get asked like, to prove that in our exams? It doesn't come up. Technically, it could come up, but 9 times out of 10, because it gave you the formula sheet, no. Okay, but it technically could. Okay, so, just a couple of things to note before we look at a couple of examples, okay? So we're going to use that formula, but note, if r equals 1, okay, which isn't a very exciting sequence, if you think about what that would mean, then what it means is that u1 would equal a, also u2 would equal a, because nothing changed when you multiply it, and so on. Therefore, the sum of the first n terms of that sequence you just add a up n times, so it would be n times a. So I just want me to think to note that if the common ratio is 1, <coughs> the terms don't change, therefore you're just adding up the same term n times, so it's n times whatever the first term is, n times a. 
Data is actually a really quick note there. Okay, so we'll look at an example, a couple of examples actually, to see how these ones work. So, here's one, find the sum of the geometric sequence. Six, twelve, twenty four, twenty eight, if sorry, forty eight, all the way up to the value forty nine thousand one hundred and fifty two. Okay, so that's a geometric series there, sequence there, and our job is to work out the summation of all those terms in that sequence. Okay, so again, from the initial sequence we've got, we know that the first value, so this is the solution, A is our first term, which is 6, R is the ratio, so that is me multiplying everything by 2 to get to the next term, so we can spot that quite quickly. Okay. What we want to work out is what term in the sequence was 49,152. We want to know the value of N that takes me there, so that's what I'm going to have to work out. So again, I know from starting off point in a geometric sequence, the general term looks like U of N equals A times r to the power n minus 1. Okay, so we know the last term was 49,152. That's going to equal a, which is 6, multiplied by 2 to the power n minus 1. Okay, so we've got that there. So if I Swap these rounds and divide by 6, so I'm going to have 2 to the power of n minus 1 equals 49,152 divided by 6, which would give me the value 8,192. Okay. So we want to know what value n is here, okay? Now, there is ways you could do this mathematically. You could take logs of both sides, then you'd bring the n minus 1 down, okay? So we can do that. However, a sort of more, because you know the calculus questions, what you could do is you could just go up powers of 2 to work out what power would equal 8,192, okay? Now, for this question, it wouldn't take you that far to work out that the actual value that the power of 2 is, it gives you 8,182, would actually be 13. Okay, so you can check that 2 to the power of 13. Okay, so since 2 to the power of 13 equals 8,192, what that means is that a power n minus 1 had to equal 13. Okay, if you use logs and you rearrange, you'd have got that value as well. Okay, so you've got that. Therefore, that tells me that if you add 1, n equals 14. Okay, so it was my 14th term that was the value of 49,152. Okay, so let's work out the summation of that. So using our formula sheet, it's a to the power 1 minus r to the power n, divided by 1 minus r. Okay, so therefore... The sum of the first 14 terms for the sequence, a is 6, it's going to multiply 1 minus 2 to the power n, which is 14, divided by 1 minus 2, which is there. Okay, and if you do that into your calculator, you should get 98,200. And 98. Okay, you can check that in your calculators. That's what the sum of the first 14 terms of that sequence would be. Okay, you okay with that one? Yeah, any questions? So, again, it depends on the values here, but because it's going to always, well, it depends what the ratio is also here, but logs could have solved us that in a much more mathematical way. But also, just because we wanted to find the value here, just go up the powers of 2 in this case, and then you would have found it relatively quickly, okay? Uh, it doesn't take long for the powers to get quite uh, tall. So we'll look at a third 
So like a second example that looks a little bit different, okay, a bit similar to one of the ones for the arithmetic sequence, okay? The summation that. So example two for the geometric series. Eight, twenty-four, seventy-two, two hundred and sixteen. Find the least number of terms and the least number of terms which must be taken to give us some Exceeding one million. Okay, so that's what I want to find the least amount of terms that would require us in that geometric series if we added them all up, summation them all up to exceed the value of a million. Okay, so that's what this question is. So remember, there was one version like that in the uh, arithmetic one we've seen as well. I think it was up to 10,000, I think. So, from a series, so this is the solution. The good thing is we are given a first term, so we know A is 8, and we know the ratio. Well, it's actually quite easy again to spot that 8 times by 3 would take up to 24, so the ratio here is 3. Okay? So, if I uh, go into my... Uh, formula for the summation. So the sum would be a of 1 minus r to the n 1 minus r. Okay, so that's my formula. I put in the data for this. So a is a 1 minus 3 to the power n 1 minus 3 there. Okay. Now I can tidy this up because that's going to give me 8 bracket 1 minus 3 to the n. That's going to give me negative 2 on the bottom. Okay, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Therefore, that gives me, if I divide 8 by negative 2, that's negative 4, 1 minus 3 to the n. So if I put that negative 4 into that bracket, the terms change around. So that's actually 4 multiplied by 3 to the n minus 1. So I've just put the negative in the bracket, so that means the sign of change, which makes it look a bit tidier, I think, in my thing. Okay? So we'll work for that. So I want to know what value of n would exceed 10,000, okay? So that's what I'm going to work out. So I'm working out when does 4 times 3 to the n minus 1, not 10,000, sorry, a million. Okay? So let's work out what value of n would give me that there. So, solving this, so if we divide by 4, so we're going to get 3n minus 1 equals 250,000. Okay, add the 1, so 3 to the n is 250,000 and 1. Okay, so again, a bit like what we do here, we could use logs to solve. Okay, well, that would give us a value n. Or what we could do is we could find two values of n here that would give us both sides of the number and then we could work out which one we would need. Okay, so for example, if you've done just the power way, go up to powers of 3, so 3 to the power of 11 is 177,147. Okay, so that's what the value of 3 to the power of 11 is, which we know is less than 250,000. And one. Okay. But if I go up to my next power, 3 to the power 12, that equals 531,441, which we know is greater than 250,000. And one. So
So in other words, what that says is, in order for us to reach the value here, we had to go up to the 12th term. The 11th term couldn't take us up that value that far. Okay, so therefore we would need so we would need 12 terms. Okay, folks, and that's it for this video.